Hi, how's it, how's it going? Um, the Canadian jersey will be explained in a bit, but uh, quick recap uh, since the season ended. First off, Pete DeBoer was fired, <laughs> sorry, relieved of his duties, which when I told my wife, she responded with why, and um, well, <laughs> you know, he was a really, uh, good regular season coach. Really, the tipping point for me was the end of the season where Robin Leonard needed surgery and Pete DeBoer threw him under the bus. That was just completely not what you want in your coach. And honestly, it was either him or Leonard and they chose to get rid of him, I think. To make things even better, <laughs> Steve's spot is gone! Where, oh my goodness, the power play's automatically better. And for some reason, the Islanders fired trots. And so I was thinking, oh my goodness, we got Barry Trotz. He's a defensive-minded coach, kind of like Pete DeBoer. Pete DeBoer would be great value or no name for any Canadians, and then Barry Trotz would be, you know, the actual brand. And so I was super pumped, but then the Bruins fired Bruce Cassidy? <laughs> as soon as they did, I was immediately like, yep, I want him. Him as the head coach and <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights signed Bruce Cassidy to be their head coach. I automatically think that we are going to be better next year. I think it's good that that happened now. It was interesting that it happened when it did, but I mean, it's good that he's gonna have a development camp and training camp and all this lead up and preseason and everything to work with this team. And I honestly think that he's going to revitalize a little little bit of William Carlson's presence, hopefully, because what else can I do at this point? Not anywhere back to where he was shooting that first year with us, but at least, you know, somewhat better that would make his contract worth it. The next piece of news that happened was <laughs> a trade. <laughs> This is where this this is this is coming in for the first time this video I don't know if you can see there's a C on this jersey up here the captain because we traded again for Montreal's captain Evgeny Dodonov for Shea Weber and Shea Weber is probably and when I say probably is definitely but just because you know things happen play another game for the rest of his career I think he's done and that's it's just interesting because this is the second time that Vegas has traded for uh, the Montreal Canadiens captain the first one being Max Pacioretty, which is the jersey up there. If I had a nickel for every time Vegas traded for Montreal's captain, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Please excuse my doofenshmirtz, I am not good with impressions, but yeah, uh, Vegas traded for Montreal's captain for the second time, yay! Ah, uh, he's not gonna ever play with us, which is complicated because in order for us to be able to activate everyone and have a full cap compliant team, we need to be able to fit everyone before we move anyone to LTIR, I think, with Shea Weber. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I swear I, I would enroll in a, a class, like a college level class, specifically just about the salary gap because, <laughs> and um, please enroll Kelly McCrimmon in that too. And George McPhee, and like everyone in the Golden Knights Oregon, they have uh, the previous owner of, uh, a guy that ran a website about this specific thing and they still make the dumbest decisions with things. So we clear up 5 million from Dodonov and I am feel so bad for him. I was hoping he would finish his contract out next year um, with not only A, how he finished the year because oh my goodness, we needed that scoring and didn't get us to the playoffs, but and B, just uh, that whole situation sucked. And the fact that he was able to come back and be so professional about it was awesome. And so Montreal just uh, gets the last year for him on his contract. And then at the deadline, they're gonna be able to flip him for more assets, which is just great asset management. Hmm, <laughs> that phrase, man. So we get up to the free agent signing. Oh, congrats, Colorado, on your cup. Kale McCard is awesome. Um, Kadri, awesome. Nathan McKinnon can suck it, but <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just don't like him. I, I liked him before this last season, and then this last season happened, and he did some things that I'm like, dude, what? Are you joking me? Anyway, not the point. First thing in the morning on Free Agent Frenzy Day, the Carolina Hurricanes say good morning, and then Vegas responds, hello, and then they say hope you have a good night, and then, yeah. But um, apparently, <laughs> they were <laughs> predicting the future here because uh, Vegas clearly doesn't have much that they can do. I'm like, all right, who are we trading away? And before anything is said and done, Elliot Friedman tweets out that there's rumblings of Pacioretty going out. And I'm like, you know, 
It makes sense. He was injured a lot this last year. He's still a freaking elite sniper in this league, but like, I get it. He, he was a liability and it was 7 million against the cap that we weren't really able to use for over half the season. And the, if we, the playoffs, you know, he was injured. But the thing is, is he had back surgery and we rushed him in and then he got injured again last season. And I think we rushed him back in to try to make the playoffs. And so I'm prepping myself to lose Pacioretty. And I'm thinking, you know, we might be able to get a decent return. <laughs> I couldn't even finish the sentence. <laughs> Apparently all 30 GMs, and I guess we can throw Seattle Kraken, but you guys weren't there for this. God, that got screwed over by Vegas that first year have made it their vendetta to, you know, never ever, give us anything ever again because they're just straight up fleecing us left and right. The Carolina Hurricanes first up and they trade for Patch Reddy and Dylan Coughlin for future considerations. I was so pissed at the Vegas front office for about 10 minutes where I was just like, what the heck are you guys doing? Because I was already prepared to give him up, but to give him up and Dylan Coughlin for nothing? Are you freaking joking me? My immediate thought was, well, I wanted this Canes jersey anyway, and this looks sick. I honestly might order this. Honey, how much mad money do I have? Uh, we'll figure it out. I started this thing where I was collecting jerseys from other teams and I wanted it to be Golden Knights and I had to have the captain's club. So I have Eichel from the Sabres and I have Pacioretty with the captaincy uh, from the Canadians. And I was like, great. <laughs> now we just lost Dylan Coughlin because apparently Pacioretty wasn't enough. I don't understand how Kelly McCrimmon ever thought that it was like we needed, like I get salary cap is important and I get that the Carolina Hurricanes are taking risk because they can see that he was injured this last season and only played half the games, but he was almost a point a game. He had 19 goals in 39 games. He was one, he's our best goal scorer on the team and he's gone. So we traded the reigning Vesna winner, who's that jersey right there. And then the following year, our top goal scorer and a good young, I'm gonna be like top six, so like the bottom pair, but good D-man, who's an offensive-minded, puck-moving D-man, for nothing. I, I genuinely could not tell you who was better at asset management between the Vegas front office and my toddler. I tell him he can bring one car with him to the store or whatever, and he brings one car. He knows that it's one. Meanwhile, you tell Kelly McCrimmon, hey, we can only have, you know, probably one superstar that's paying this much. And he goes, ah, I got four. <laughs> we are going to have no depth. And so if any of our stars get injured, and we've already got seven point whatever million on LTIR already from Shea Weber's contract when we're only getting back, what, 10? And I, to put it into further context, we have Frank Saravalli here. Not exactly a masterclass in asset management. To get Patch Ready, for instance, VGK gave up Nick Suzuki, a second round pick, and Thomas Tatar. Which, you know, three years Petrate, his tenure in Vegas was great. Nick Suzuki is Nick Suzuki. We knew, we drafted him. We knew who he was. We would not give up Cody Glass, which, you know, I wanted him to succeed just as much as Vegas did. So, like, mm. and then to get to Tar in our first year, we gave up a first, second, and third round pick. And, and if you were, we're just talking about trades that we've had to do to clear up cap because we got rid of Nate Schmidt to clear up cap to sign. Petrangelo, we also gave up Paul Stastny. And then before that, we'd given up Colin Miller and Cody Eakin to clear up. I uh, Last season during a game, there was a point where I was like, you know, I don't know who would win between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Vegas Injured Knights. Vegas Golden Knights or the Vegas Broken Knights. Who do you think would win? Right now, I don't know who would win between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Vegas Former Knights. And so <laughs> let's do a little test. EA Sports, NHL 22, we got this open and we're gonna go and through and here are the rosters between the Vegas Former Knights. A little note here, Texier was in the deal for Keegan Colazar. We traded a second round pick for Keegan Colazar in our first year in the inaugural season. And that pick ended up being Texier. Cody Glass, we traded for Nolan Patrick, uh, who was, I just needed to include all of our first round picks from that first season. Brad Hunt, we traded to Vancouver. It was more to give him an opportunity than anything else, but still. Nick Holden, we gave up for Evgeny Dodonov and Dylan Coughlin. 
Brandstrom was for Stone, and then Flurry and Subban, who we both we traded both of those players to the Blackhawks. Versus the Vegas Golden Knights, who have not a lot. I added Brandon Brisson in there because apparently he's the one that's going to be replacing Patches. Genuinely looking at this, I legitimately have no idea who has the edge. I simmed a playoff series between the two tw uh, ten times. Five where one was the home team, five where the other was the home team, you know, because it, it, the variables. The Vegas Golden Knights won six out of four times against the Vegas former Knights. Patch Reddy was the leading goal scorer of the entire playoffs seven of those times. And the Vegas Golden Knights that we have here is assuming we signed Nick Waugh, Nick Haig, and Keegan Colazar because we signed Brendan Howden to a one and a half million dollar extension, great. We signed Jonas Romberg to a three year 750K extension, great. I guess we're keeping Brassois? I, I genuinely do not know what the Vegas Golden Knights office is doing. And the thing is, is Brassois has a $2.3 million cap hit and most of the backups that are being signed right now are being uh, signed for about 1.5, but there are teams that still want goalies. And I think we're still gonna have to pay to give up Brassois because GMs are just like, yep, screw Vegas. I, 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 I get, there, there are Vegas fans that are rationalizing this by saying, well, yeah, of course we're gonna have to pay someone to take him because you know he's injury prone and it's 7 million, not a lot of teams have that, but the Carolina freaking Hurricanes, who uh, <laughs> look fantastic, they literally were able to get him for nothing and they still have cap space. <laughs> oh my goodness, they got Brent Burns! <laughs> uh, uh, this free agent frenzy has been crazy. Uh, Johnny Cadero signing with Columbus, that was the weirdest thing of the day. I, I genuinely don't know what's gonna happen because we have three goalies currently because I want Logan Thompson to be in the NHL. He's definitely ready to be an NHL goaltender, at least a backup. And here's the thing, with Bruce Cassidy as a head coach, we, we and this roster currently as constructed with signing one of the RFAs, we could still win the Stanley Cup this season and it'd be like, yep, okay, cool, because the NHL is the NHL. It's great. I love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love this league so much because it's so unpredictable who can win the Stanley Cup. But the thing is, is like, I would say we're worse than we were last year. And we missed the playoffs. <laughs> With, you know, everything considered, we're going to have a better season next year. Of course we are. And we have Martin Jones back in the Pacific. So that's going to be helping us out to score goals a lot for those games that he plays against us. And uh, Calgary is taking a step back because they lost Gaudreau. Um, but Edmonton, LA is going to take another step forward probably. I would hate to be the Atlantic though, oh my goodness. Ottawa? I, <laughs> I'm so excited for hockey to be back, for Vegas Golden Knight hockey to be back, and of course I'm going to be cheering them. And I'm going to be cheering for whoever's in net. I'm going to be cheering for all of our players to score. I'm going to be cheering for Eichel and Stone because they're my team. I'm also going to be cheering for Flurry and Zach Hyman because they're my favorite players, and that's great. I'm not going to be cheering at all for the Oilers, just Zach Hyman. <laughs> Watch, he gets the game-winning goal in the playoffs against us. Oh, I'm going to be so mad, assuming, you know, we get there to the playoffs. A, A, A plus for the Ducks social media team for this with the Dodonov trade to the Canadians, the, the real trade that actually happened, and then this one to the Canes for after the trade for Pacioretty because that's fantastic. Theodore Tooth on Twitter, Shea Theodore's missing tooth, but since he has it again, it's Theodore Tooth great, who's now fire killing McCrimmon. Regarding the Pacioretty trade, I think by and large VGK's front office gets way too much hate from the fans, and for the most part they have made good aggressive moves to be a cup contender. There is absolutely no defending this one. They deserve all the hate they get. I, I, they I cannot believe they did not get a seventh round pick, at least, for any of Flurry, Pacioretty, or Dylan Coughlin. I cannot believe we had to pay to get rid of Pacioretty. Dylan Coughlin, who I, he's the only defenseman in Vegas Golden Knights history to have a hat trick. <laughs> I am frustrated with Vegas Golden Knights front office. I think Kelly McCrimmon, it depends on what he's able to sign our RFAs to, his next trade. Uh, but if it's as bad as this one, he needs to be out. And if George McPhee isn't going to pull him, then <laughs> Bill Foley needs to step in and, and get these guys out of here because they don't know what they're doing or they uh, just 
Oh, this is rough. We still have the rest of the summer to figure out what else Vegas Golden Knights are gonna do. Um, and so maybe I'll update more with that, but just, just minor things before we close out here. Other signings, Sheldon Rempel, a two-year contract. Byron Freus, two-year contract. Michael Hutchinson for a one-year contract. And uh, I know who that one is. I don't know who the other two are, sorry. Uh, if I very butchered your name. Also, the Vegas Golden Knights signed Sakari Mananen, my Flames fan friend, <laughs> the triple F. He speaks Finnish. I should learn how to pronounce that from him. Thanks, Elliot Friedman. He scored the gold medal winner for Finland in the Olympics this last year. And so uh, at least we have someone who can score. And I saw that game winner. It looked a lot like Patches. Just twisting the knife in there. At least we're not Chuck Fletcher and the Flyers because Boy. Imagine not being able to sign Johnny Gaudreau because he's signed Tony D'Angelo instead. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, uh, we're, we're right above them, but uh, my goodness. Anyways, it's going to be it for this edition of the Nightly Review. Thank you so much for watching me and have a good night.